Okay then, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you're all doing well. Today's NAV know-how session is going to be covering emailing documents from NAV. As you may know by now, my name is Adam and I'm part of the 4PS account management team. And I'm joined here this morning by James Sharp, who many of you may know from our previous webinars and also from our consultancy team. So I'll hand over to James in just a second and he'll take you through today's agenda. If you've been on any of our webinars before, you know how it works. But if not, we ask that you forward any questions directly onto me once the webinar is over. This way we can just save some time and make sure that we don't overrun. So I'll put my contact details up on the screen at the end of the presentation. And please feel free to give me a call or drop me an email. Also, just to let you know, this session is being recorded uh, and will be available to re-watch on our website in the very near future. Nice and short one for you this morning. We're looking for today's webinar to last around 10, 15 minutes. So if you're all set, James, it's over to you. Thanks, Adam, and good morning, everyone. So in this webinar, we'll be covering um, emailing documents from NAV. So the document types that we'll look at in this video will be sales quotes and sales invoices. There are other documents that you can email from now, but these are just the ones that we're going to look at in this webinar. Um, so what you can essentially do is instead of um, sending a PDF that's attached to the quote, instead of downloading that PDF, attach it to an email and then sending it to a customer, what you can do is you can just email it directly from the vision. So we'll look at how you do that. Um, when you email directly from the vision, the email body is automatically populated with a template and what we'll look at then is how you can edit that template um well you can't actually edit the template directly what you can do is you, you can make a copy of it and edit that copy so i'll show you how we format the text and move fields around and remove field and add field and things like that so if a customer wants to buy something from a business that customer might get a different price based on how many things they buy or what time of year it is. Sometimes there's seasonal offers, something might be cheaper if they buy it in a particular month, or there might be a discount on if they buy a large quantity, or maybe if they buy over 10, they might get 15% off, things like that. So customers may call up and say, can I have a quote? Can I have a sales quote on if um, I was to buy a certain amount of a certain item? Now, to do that, we would go to sales quotes. We'd click new and we'd enter the customer that's asked for the quote. Um, I'll say they're looking to buy some items. I'll say a bicycle. So let's say they want to buy 10. So we can see here that if they buy 10 bicycles, they get a 15% discount. So they're quite expensive. That's £6,165 per bicycle. Um, but if they buy 10, then it's only £52,000, which is 15% off. So that's one of the reasons people might ask for a printed quote, because the price might vary depending on how much they order. So they've asked for a quote on 10. So what we could do if we weren't emailing from NAV is we could print, print to PDF. So what this will give us then is a nice customer facing document that we can send externally to the customer that's asked for the quote. This is just a standard document um, not, not too fancy, but it does the job. It's got everything they need there. So what we could do is we could save that to our local files, open up Outlook, create a new email, attach it, write the email body, and then send it to the customer. But if we're sending lots of quotes, lots of orders, lots of invoices, it can be quite, quite time consuming. So instead, what we can do is we can email from now. And to do that, we press send by email. If we press send by email, uh, we get presented with this window where we can type in the email address of the person we want to send the email to. You'll notice there that there's a button called uh, email uh, edit in Outlook, which I'll come back to. But if we don't tick that and we just press OK, that will send that email then directly um, to the email address that we specified and it will have the attachment on. So that PDF that we just looked at, instead of us having to save it and then attach it to an email, and send it to the customer, it will just attach it automatically. So if we go to our emails, there we can see it's come through. And this is our sales quote. Um, if we open the attachment, we'll see the PDF that we saw earlier. 
And we've also got an email body here, which is like a summary um, of the quote. Also, what we can do is we can send by email and we can edit in Outlook. You'll notice that it said the uh, it said yours sincerely and a person's name. So this here is a salesperson. So if we change a salesperson code to my name here, this was JS, I'll update, and then we send email again. Let's add the email address. Now we'll see now it says sincerely James Sharp. So that's where that gets mapped from, the salesperson on the quote or the order or the invoice. Um, so if we tick edit in Outlook this time and press OK, instead of it just sending the email straight away, what it's going to do is it's going to create the email for us and then we can edit the body here. So we might say, actually, we don't want the address. Uh, just put a signature and we'll get rid of that maybe. And then we can send the email. So what we've done there is the same thing. We've sent it from now. We haven't had to attach the PDF document, uh, but by ticking that edit in Outlook uh, tick box, we get the option then to edit the body of the email before we send it, if we want to change it, reformat it. But I don't think there's any real need to, but if you specifically wanted to, then you can. So we can see now that this one looks slightly different to this one. So we, we took this off at the top. Um, so we've just reformatted it a bit. Um, so let's say the customer's happy with the quote and they want to go ahead, we could make order, convert the quote to an order, we'll open that up, we'll add their purchase order number in, and ship an invoice. So now we've got our posted sales invoice, and again, from here, what we could do is we could print it, now we could print it to PDF, open and save it, um, attach it manually to an email and then send the email. But instead, what we can do is we can just press email. And if we press email, add the email. So we don't want to edit it in Outlook this time. And we can just press OK. And then that is going to send the sales invoice document, which is different to the quote. So that will look slightly different. And it will say sales invoice on the top as well. So if we just wait for a second, that will come through. There it is. And again, uh, we've got an email body here, uh, we've got the salesperson here, we've got the attachment, which is the same attachment that we would get if we just printed to PDF, but we haven't had to do that extra step, it's just added it automatically, and we've got a summary here of the invoice. So that is how you email from NAV. Um, but what you can also do uh, is change this email body as a template, so instead of, if, if you're not happy with the body in the email, instead of editing in Outlook and then making the same change over and over, what you can do is you can change the template that this actually gets pulled from. So to do that, close this, and go back to our clients, and we go to report selections. So there's report selections for all the areas of the system. So we've got sales purchase service, for example, so because we're looking at sales quotes and sales invoices, we're going to go to report selection sales. If we select our document type here, so we'll pick invoice. And we can see that the email body layout used is the default email body. If we click that, we'll see the other email bodies that we've got in the database. <clears throat> so we could select any of these if we wanted. So you can have multiple set up. But what we're going to do in this case is we're going to just edit the default one. Um, to do that, you press edit layout, but what it doesn't do is edit that default one. What it actually does is make a copy of it because it won't let you edit the default one, which is good because it means you can always go back. So now we can see that this one's called sales invoice copy. Um, so we can then add uh, text to here. So maybe this quote is valid for 30 days, and we might say that actually we want to have that a bit bigger. So 
because that's quite important. Um, so what we can do is we can save that, close it, and then it'll ask us if we want to import the changes. So we need to press yes. So now we can see that we've got a copy of our default layout. We didn't press copy layout, we pressed edit layout, but uh, it automatically creates a new one because it won't let us edit this standard one. So with that line selected, I'll press OK. And now the email body layout description changes then from the default email body to the copy of the uh, email body. What we can do is we can edit the list and give it a more appropriate name. Just call it, say, new, just for example. Um, so that, that's how you would change the name if um, you had lots of different versions. If you have different versions with different formatting, then you might want to keep on top of the descriptions. So now we've got that changed, we can press OK. And we'll go back to our press starts and voices and send by email. So we can see now we've got some extra text here. It says this quote is valid for 30 days. And we can see that the uh, address here at the bottom is in bigger because we've put it in a bigger font. Uh, so what we're not doing here is changing the PDF. What we're doing here is changing the email body. Uh, so now I've pressed send. If we go to Outlook. Then we can see we've got a new version with that extra text in here. Um, so this quote is valid for 30 days. So that, that's the bit that we've added. And then because we're saying that we think this is quite important, we're going to put it in bigger font. So that's what we've done there. Um, so that is adding text and formatting text, but you can actually add fields from nav onto the email body that aren't on the template already. And to do that, we have to edit the uh, email body in the developer tab. So I'll show you now how we do that. So if we go back to our report selection sales and we go to the email body layout, so we click our template and we will edit layout. So when we edit layout, it's going to open it in Word again. And there's a tab here called developer. If this tab isn't available straight away, which it might not be because it wasn't for me, um, you have to right click the ribbon and customize ribbon. And there's a tick box here for the developer tab. Uh, if, if you open up Word and you haven't got the developer tab, you have to right click, customize ribbon, tick that, press OK, and then close and reopen Word. It doesn't just pull it straight through. You have to restart Word. Uh, but when you restart Word, you'll have this uh, tab here with lots of things that we can do with the document. So the one I wanted to show you was the XML mapping pane. And if we click that, we can pick the data source that we want to look for our fields. So we're going to pick the uh, Dynamics Nav sales invoice. If we click that, we can expand the header, and this is all the information that we can pull onto our email body. So we can hit, see that we've got some things here that aren't listed or aren't present on the document already. So we can actually use this to add new bits of data to our email body. So if we looked for something we don't have already, maybe payment terms or maybe due date. So for due date, then we can see we've got two two things there. We've got due date, which pulls through the due date, and then we've got due date underscore LBL. So that's the label. So that's the caption. So say we've got due date here, uh, label, and then due date here. So it means we've actually got that. I'll add something else. Um, got company email. I oh, will just add the due date now. I'll just stick with that example. Um, so we right click that, insert content control, and plain text and it's going to add it there because that's where I've got the mouse. So what we'd do is say we wanted it here, click there, right click, insert contact control, plain text. So there we go. So there we've got our document date label at the top, which is going to say the word, uh, the words document date. And then under we've got the document date lookup, which is going to pull the document date from the vision. So if we save that, uh, close it, 
import the changes and press OK. Then when we go back to our posted sales invoices, if we print a posted sales invoice, then we'll see the same uh, PDF because we haven't edited the PDF, we're just editing the email body. But if we send by email, then we can see we've got the document date there. And if we add the email address to the customer, press OK. So we just added my email address again, so it should come through to me. When that pulls through, we'll see we've got the document date on the bottom. So we might want to put it somewhere more appropriate, maybe in the top, maybe put it a bit smaller so it looks the same with the rest of the text. But that's the concept that not only can you change the size of your text, move your text, delete text, um, you can also add new fields, new field lookups from the vision that aren't on the email body already and then put them where you like. So thanks for listening and I'll pass you back over to Adam. Excellent. Thank you very much, James. I hope you all found that interesting and useful. So if you do have any questions or would like to know more, please take a note of my contact details on screen now and do get in touch. I'll be happy to help you out. Keep your eyes open for details of our next Nav Know How webinar, which is going to be announced very shortly. Uh, and also, by now, you will have received an invitation to our upcoming customer day on the 13th of November, just under two weeks away. Uh, so it's going to be an excellent day where we'll be hosting roundtable discussions, getting updates on all things Microsoft and Nav, looking at some one-minute wonders in your system, Nav integrations with other software, and much, much more. So if you would like to attend, you can either sign up on our website or let me know and I can do it all for you. Once again, thank you for being with us this morning. Have a great day and we'll see you very soon. Cheers. Thank you.